Good morning. Let me uh, let me come a little closer. <laughs> Good morning. I hope everybody is having themselves a fantastic day. Uh, I'm uh, well. I'm drinking a cup of coffee, and uh, from the looks of it, I'm in a garden. Now the question is: Is this my garden? Well, the answer might just surprise you. Oh. So this is going to be a long-ish video. Uh, this is uh, the first video um, of a sequence, uh, if you will. It's going to be going on for quite a long, long time because, well, this is my garden. <laughs> and I've started a project. And it's a big project, but the outcome is going to be amazing. Um, I have uh, I've been planning on gardening uh, this. I've been planning on doing this for years. Um, okay, so let me just get straight to it. Uh, one, it's called Back to Eden Gardening. Two, it is a form of permaculture. It's called sheet mulching, if I, if I remember correctly. It is called sheet mulching. So what I want to do <clears throat> is the next series of videos, uh, I want to take you along on the journey. So let me put my, my coffee down. Okay, so this is how it's going to go, okay? I am in an urban lot here. Um, I'm just under, now I've got a big lot, but I'm just under uh, half an acre of 0.47 of an acre. So it's a little bit of a bigger lot, but it is, you know, an urban lot. I am literally in a neighborhood, uh, <laughs> houses everywhere, city council, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, we are on, we're totally on the grid and um, you got sewer system and water coming in and all the, the stuff. So typical, normal, urban property. And I hear all the time, oh, you know, I live in the city. We can't do this. We can't do that. Well, I understand if you live in the big city, you're in an apartment, you're downtown, rush hour traffic. I understand that's difficult. I get that. But the majority of us Americans or people, actually all around the world live in urban settings um, and uh, that's what this is now I've been trying to garden here on YouTube since 2009 it is now 2018 and I have every single moment since then I have been doing everything I can to get a property and do what I'm about to do I'm gonna take you on a journey uh, where we turn this standard lot into a uh, gardening oasis basically so the purpose of gardening this way and, and doing what I'm, I'm going to be doing is sustainability I want my garden to be able to provide for me on a regular basis uh, year after year with very low uh, well impact from me uh, I don't want to have to be out here hours and hours and hours and hours and hours pulling weeds and, and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to be doing a lot of um, uh, perennial planting, uh, which basically means plants that come back year after year after year after year. Um, you know, <clears throat> if I have to plant it every single year, eh, there'll be a few things that I do that with, but I'm going to do everything I can to put more of a structure in place uh, where I don't have to do that. Also, my planting style is not in the norm. Uh, I don't want to deal with bugs and, and infestations and crazy stuff. And the only way that I can find is to get away from traditional gardening. <sighs> traditional gardening, it's rose and monoculture, monoculture. And uh, I don't 
want to do monoculture. Uh, <clears throat> we actually got really lucky with this particular piece of land. Uh, here, I mean, like I said, it's 2018 and trying to buy property right now is very difficult if you are not a cash purchaser. Uh, if you are buying land strictly on FHA uh, and uh, down payment assistance and all these different little funding things that the government tries to help us with, then it is very, 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 very difficult to buy anything right now. The market is insane. There's no inventory uh, for the most part. And what there is, is going to 40 to $60,000 higher than what they're asking, uh, you know, and uh, trying to ask them to, you know, oh, can you do this and can you do that? You know, it just doesn't work. It, it's, you take it or you leave it. And that's kind of the situation, uh, unfortunately, but so you kind of have to work with what you got. Anyways, getting off topic. Um, so this is the garden. And as you can see behind me, there is a trailer. <laughs> uh, it's because it's blocking where I moved an entire thing of wood chips. But there's piles of wood chips uh, over here as well. And you can see uh, in this little section right here, <clears throat> uh, I've already sort of started putting them on the ground. It definitely needs more. So the plan is to cover the ground um, probably about 10 to 12, maybe 16 inches in some places. Now I say 16 inches of wood chips in some places, uh, that's primarily around the big trees. So I do have, what do I got? One, two, three, four. I got four established fruit trees um, that I am going to keep. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to prune them and thin them out and uh, get them to stick around a little bit longer. Uh, unfortunately, I have a power line uh, straight above my head here, and it goes right through the middle of one of my apple trees. So it will have to be thickly, thickly pruned and maintained every single year. Uh, also, you know, it's a <clears throat> these trees that are on my property, and I'll, I'll walk you around uh, a little bit later, but... The trees that are on my property are older uh, apple trees. I have a pear tree um, and um, they have just been typically maintained. Um, they're, they're, when I say typically, uh, American style uh, apple prune or tree pruning, which is usually from the outside in. Uh, give them a round shape and kind of, you know, um, uh, going against nature, if you will. So, yes, I talk with my hands. I'm sorry. It's just, that's who I am. So, um, but I'm going to go the opposite direction. Uh, I, I'm a pruner uh, uh, or an arborist or whatever you want to call it, where I prune from the inside out. So I will be uh, out here in the garden doing that this, um, this coming January, possibly February. And, uh, and I'll be bringing you along. I am going to do everything I can to bring you along for every single step of the ride. Uh, and at this point in time, I'm in a situation where I can show you about three steps of uh, converting this garden over. And, uh, you know, step one, obviously, is one of the most important. Step one is planning. Figure it out where you want to put beds where you if you do want to keep a piece of grass which is what we plan on doing uh, if you want to put a fire pit in if you want to put in a play area for the kids um, you know because it's an urban setting we still have to live in our backyards yeah you, know, you don't want to walk out the back door and immediately enter a food forest uh, you want a little bit of a buffer uh, before you get there especially for guests you have a guest come over you know the typical American um, they don't get it. It doesn't register. Uh, they just look at it like, oh my gosh, your yard is way overgrown. That's what they say. That's what they think, uh, honestly. I talk so fast. Actually, I think it's because I'm super excited. So, <clears throat> um, okay. So the, um, foundation is the most important. It's step one, number one. Uh, if you're going to convert your yard or your garden, um, 
or do what I'm doing, converting an urban property, um, it is imperative to plan, plan, plan. I would say 90% of your labor or your work is planning out your garden. It is most crucial, the most important thing. It really is. Uh, figuring out where you wanna go, what you wanna do, and when you plan it, do it in stages, do it in steps. Don't uh, think, okay, I'm gonna jump in this and I'm gonna complete it all in one weekend and I'm gonna have this most amazing garden. It doesn't work that way. Gardening, it doesn't matter what style you use. It doesn't matter what direction you go. It doesn't matter. Gardening is a very slow process. It is something that you literally need to do step by step one day at a time, little chunks, little pieces. You very quickly and very easily can be massively overwhelmed uh, with with gardening. I mean, it, it, <clears throat> for a good example, um, in Europe, uh, England and um, in that area, in, they have what's called an allotment. Now, some people will wait years to get this allotment and all an allotment is is basically a garden it's a small piece of land that is designated um, by a council or a community that this is for people that want to garden uh, vegetable gardening whatever and so they'll wait forever and ever and ever and ever to get one and sometimes when they get these properties they are so overgrown they haven't been maintained or touched for years some of them even decades um, and you get it you're like oh my god I can't wait I'm gonna get in there I'm gonna get dirty and I'm, I'm gonna put some plants in the ground and it's gonna be fantastic and then they get to the plot and they're like oh wow and within a matter of a couple of days sometimes a week they give up they quit and they walk away and then the plot will sit for another year and another year and another year and another year well the person is thinking someday I'll get in there and I'll finish it so <clears throat> go slow take your time it it is a long process so what our plan here is is we're going to convert this standard lot uh, basically into an urban homestead um, and it is going to be a very long process but it's okay. Um, I'm not in any massive hurry. I'd like to be done by uh, this time next year, possibly spring, uh, with putting down the wood chips. Um, I'd like eventually to bring in some chickens and kind of do just the typical back to Eden garden uh, method or setup that Paul Gauchi has. Now that's where I got the majority of my uh, information uh, for this style garden. So if you, uh, not right this minute, but if you want to know more about that, uh, look up Back to Eden Garden. Um, they have a, a little documentary movie and uh, also there's a, a creator uh, by the name of uh, L2 Survive. They call him, I think they call him that nub. <laughs> um, or the nub or something like that. But uh, anyways, he's filmed a ton, a lot of people have a ton of Paul Gauchi uh, in his garden and giving tours and stuff of what he's doing. And that is kind of the direction that, that I'm going. Not so much for the tour. I don't want to do any of that. I wanted to bring you along for the ride. This is basically the tour. Bring you along for the ride and show you how you can do this. The more people that are on the internet that are talking about permaculture, talking about back to Eden, talking about homesteading, talking about this stuff. Um, I think the more people will want to do it for themselves. You know, there's a lot of information out there, but unfortunately, I think a lot of the information that's out there is jumbled or misleading. Gardening is weird. There are thousands of different ways to garden. Okay, hundreds of thousands of different ways, different styles, different methods, and not one style or one method is the right way. I'm telling you right now. So be assured that not one style of gardening is the right way. 
whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to try, uh, if it's successful or you can find something that is successful, that is perfect for you. And that's all that matters. If my style of gardening that just doesn't work for you, well, hey, hopefully you learn something new and, you know, maybe uh, you have a good time while you're here. But if my style of gardening is for you, then, you know, it's kind of a step-by-step -step process showing you how I'm doing it, what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, uh, and what is possible. So, you know, but there's other people out there too that are doing, you know, uh, square foot gardening and they're building raised beds and they are, you know, doing an orchard style garden or they're doing, you know, whatever, building swa swales and, and, you know, all these different types of polycultures and, or, or whatever, you know, just all these different types of gardening. There's lots of it. There's the till method, the no-till method. There's standard gardening <laughs> where you strip the soil you know the topsoil off and you you know kill everything in sight uh there's the roundup people there's a lot there's a lot um and uh and and here i just want to I, I just want to be doing my own thing and and i've done so much research um over the last and it's gonna be i'm gonna tell you it's 11 years we started buying a house 11 years ago and every turn we took, we just got railroaded and had to stop and went a different direction and that didn't work and went a different direction and that didn't work. So over this, this time, I've had a lot of time to plan, a lot of time to work out in my head what the heck I wanna do, what's gonna happen, how we're gonna do it, where we're gonna go, what, oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, and I'm so anxious to get done and get moving and grooving and doing um, that, um, yeah, yeah. And I want to bring you along for the ride so bad. Um, and uh, of course, with my, my work the way it is and has been, it's been very difficult uh, to, uh, to get up here on YouTube and share with you and talk with you. Uh, it's, uh, it's like, I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't want to complain. All right, so let me have me a sip, yeah. Okay, so number one, covered it, planning. Plan, plan, plan. Figure out where you want stuff to go, okay? Just just going over that again. Um, making sure that you um, know what kind of layout you want. It's very, very important. Number two, acquiring wood chips. Now this is a very important thing because <clears throat> there are many, many different types of wood chips, okay? Many different types of wood chips. <coughs> Excuse me. And you wanna make sure that you get the right type of wood chips. So <coughs> you hear wood chips and the first thing in your head is, oh yeah, the stuff they uh, used to put in playgrounds. Now they put rubber down, but the stuff they used to put in playgrounds. No. So that is all internal wood. Uh, I have a chunk of, I have a chunk of wood here. So this, this is a, a type of internal wood. Actually, it's a plywood product, but it's wood. It's just the center of the tree, right? Just the, the center of the tree. You need more than just the center of the tree. Uh, you need the leaves, you need the branches, you need the bark, you need all of the tree. The whole thing to be ground up in a grinder or a wood chipper. You need every part of that tree because <clears throat> in order to create mulch, which is what you're doing, you need the green stuff as well as the brown stuff and you need a pretty good mixture of the two because you want to grow fungal matter. You want there to be, um, oh, I'm spacing on all the names. Um, you, you want there to be growth in the wood chips. You want the wood chips to break down um, and produce compost basically. That is the whole purpose of it. You know, you're covering the ground with a layer of mulch which is breaking down and uh, feeding the soil. And so 
if you get just wood, which is the middle of the tree, it'll just sit there. It won't do anything. <coughs> the, uh, the, the organisms and the life, and uh, I want to say the word mycelium, and, and um, th those things don't exist. They're not there. And if they're not there, then it literally will just sit there on the top of the soil and not do anything. And eventually, uh, it'll end up leaching out nitrogen and, and all kind of, you know, all kinds of problems, all kinds of problems, uh, and make the situation worse uh, than better. So as you can see, I got the grass uh, on the ground behind me. I'm doing what I can to keep it green. Um, and so I am watering as I'm laying down the wood chips because I want to keep that grass green. The green grass is actually helping with that breaking down process. Um, and so when you lay the wood chips down, uh, the, the grass breaks down um, and it helps the wood chips start that process of, of breaking down and becoming mulch um, or a compost basically. And that is, <clears throat> that is imperative that that happens, that process. Now there's different ways of doing that, but we'll get to that in here in a minute. Acquiring wood chips is part two. It is the most imp second most important thing. Uh, the most important, of course, planning. Second most important is acquiring the chips. You need to find somebody, and I don't recommend going and getting 30 or 40 different people to, to bring you chips. <coughs> My recommendation is to try to find one person Tell them you're going to be loyal to them. Tell them that they're the only person that can come on your property and dump chips. And do whatever you can to make them happy. Uh, yeah, these people are coming in and they're dropping a load of wood chips, which could cost them $150 to $200 to, to pay. They, they have to pay to get rid of them when they take them to the dump. So <clears throat> you're saving them money by bringing them to your house and dumping them. Meanwhile, the favor they're doing for you is they're providing your family uh, with, uh, you know, the ability to provide food um, in abundance. So um, be loyal to one person uh, and take good care of them and they'll take care of you over the years and uh, try to find somebody close. Um, I know a lot of people have uh, tree trimming companies, you know, they're 20 miles, 30 miles away. If you can find someone that's within, you know, two or three miles, you're better off. Uh, even if it's just their office, you're better off because what'll happen is um, they got to park their truck every night. Well, if you're on the way from them, their job site to go in and parking their truck at the office or whatever, hey, they can stop along the way and drop off a load and, and head off to the office. So convenience, try to make it convenient for them as well. Also, <clears throat> don't put anything in their way. If you're gonna, f if you have a place to dump the chips, uh, try to make sure they can get into that location to dump the chips. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, uh, all the time. Don't don't park a car in their way, or don't park a, a vehicle or something like that in their way. It looks like that trailer's in the way. That trailer's not in the way. Uh, they actually can get uh, next to the, the trailer. But uh, make sure they have a place where they can come and dump. If you're not home, they need to be able to get access to your property to dump a load of wood chips. So uh, definitely be mindful of that. Um, if you don't have a way for them to uh, drop a load on your property, like in the grass or wherever, and instead they have to do it on the street, which I don't rec I don't ever recommend letting anyone dump anything on your street, especially wood chips, uh, because it, it, you have to get it moved, <laughs> or you're paying a fee, a fine. Um, but if you're having them drop it in your driveway, for instance, you. It's hardcore because you are on a time restraint to get that stuff moved because they're going to bring you another load. And so your driveway is going to get full and then they have a load they need to dump. They have nowhere to dump it and they know you want it. So now they're dumping it in the street or they're, they, so my, my thought, the driveway is the last resort. Um, my my setup, the way I've got it, is 
they dump it over here. <clears throat> I load it up and I move it to the rest of the garden. And, uh, and I shuffle it around and, uh, and I take care of, of, of it so that it's going where it needs to go. Uh, that way they're not driving all over the property, <coughs> trying to figure out where he wants it next or anything like that. Um, and I can put it right where I want it. I can put it as deep as I want it. Yeah, it's a lot of physical labor, but you do this once and you're done. You don't have to do it again, uh, which is extremely important um, because the more times you do something, you know, uh, throughout the rest of your life, the less productive it is. Uh, you're putting more into it than what it's giving back. And that's not my thing. I'd rather put it in hardcore and do it the first time, do it the right way, and then not have to put any more services in uh, to maintain it for a long period of time. And then if I have to do it again, a little bit of this <clears throat> or a little bit of maintenance and then more time. Uh, I'm okay with that, but having to constantly, it's like grass. You water your grass, your grass grows. Your grass grows, it needs to be mowed. It needs to be weeded. It needs to be aerated. It needs to be maintained all the time. This is uh, mowing your grass, watering your grass. It's a long process. All summer long, you're mowing once, twice a week. You're, you're watering three, four times a week. You got the cost of the gasoline, the cost of the lawnmower, the cost of the weed whacker, the cost of the water. It's a high maintenance thing. And honestly, the payback is very little. Um, <coughs> very, very little. You, you actually don't get uh, a whole lot out of grass other than to see this green patch of land. And that's it. So, yeah. Anyways, so part two, the right kind of mulch. You want the green and the brown. You want to take care of the people bringing it to you. Take care of them. Tell them that you're grateful. Bake them some cookies. Do something to show them that uh, that you really do appreciate their you know their service and their time, and uh, the, them dropping this stuff off. Um, <clears throat> okay, so part three comes down to location and placing this stuff where you want it. Now, if you're gonna be going, and and this is <clears throat> all debatable. Okay, but if you're gonna go in and place, I'd say six inches of wood chips in or under, maybe even eight inches or under, you want to put in some sort of sheet mulch. So that would be newspapers, cardboard. Uh, if you do put cardboard down, make sure that you take all of the tape and and all the non-cardboard stuff off. Uh, and which is debatable. A lot of people don't like cardboard because it's got a lot of glue and stuff in it because uh, it's, you know, held together. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so any type of uh, fabric, or not fabric, you don't, don't ever use landscape fabric, horrible stuff. But any type of covering that you end up laying the wood chips on top of <coughs> uh, when you only do that much, it is a really good idea. Um, simply because the weeds will grow up through uh, your compost and then uh, you're out there pulling weeds and stuff. So um, you want to be able to knock them back at least long enough that um, the mycelium and all the bacteria and, and, and stuff that's in the soil can establish itself. Uh, the other thing is when you lay it down, lay it down thick. Uh, lay it down thicker than what you intend because what's gonna happen is when you first put it down, it's got the, it's big and it's got this air pocket and it's very fluffy. And, uh, and so lay it down real thick uh, because what happens as it collects moisture and time, it, it starts to kind of compact and smash down and get thinner and thinner and thinner. So uh, lay it on nice and thick and you should be good to go. So there's that. Now, planting. If you have any questions, by the way, leave them in the comment section below, I'll, I'll get to them. But uh, when it comes to planting in it, you don't wanna plant 
You don't want to put plants or starts in the chips. You want them to be in the soil. And as they grow up, you slowly push the compost or the, the wood chips back. So, okay, that's kind of a, a little bit of get to go. Um, you know, talk about maintenance and all that stuff later and answer any questions and that kind of stuff later. <clears throat> so let me give you a tour. Um, it's gonna be a little shaky because I'm gonna turn the camera around and hold it, but let me give you a tour of what I got going on so far and show you what there is and isn't and what's happening and so let's go take a look at the yard shall we oh my friends my friends my friends this is a pile of wood obviously a pile of wood uh, this is what little bit of wood that I have um, received from taking out bushes <clears throat> and oh look it's a bush <laughs> <coughs> and the smell is so amazing so um stand back here you can kind of see the back property there <coughs> so if you can see let me point to it there's the power lines runs right through that apple tree I'm not sure what this tree is right here, but it's going to go. We're going to get rid of it. And there's another apple tree there. And then there is a pear tree there and an apple tree there. So those are the main trees. Those are what's going to end up staying. I'm just going to end up cleaning them up and trimming them up and changing them and making them, making them cool. So let me back up a little bit here uh, to the property line. Okay, so there was this huge, huge, huge bush here on the side of my house. <clears throat> As you can see, we trimmed it and hacked it out. And this is what's left. <clears throat> uh, we had three loads to the dump and I cut them up and stood on them and packed them down. But we had three loads of wood go to the dump. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> that white bench over here on the side, that's the property line. And all of those bushes there in the back, that's all going to go. So <clears throat> that, uh, that will be pushed back and that will all be disappearing. You can see here where they're, they're dumping the chips. They're, they're trying not to kill this <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful Japanese maple, but this little teeny busted up sad uh, Japanese maple is actually gonna go we're gonna take him out so yeah they they can go right over it <clears throat> so look at that now I had a comment uh, about wood chips uh, oh be careful they uh, they'll con uh, they'll burn they'll they'll catch fire they'll they're gonna uh, self ignite mm, no they're wet. <laughs> um, it is hot and it's composting. That's uh, that's kind of the, you can kind of see some steam coming off of that one. Uh, that's normal, and there's nothing that's going to happen. They're perfectly fine, um, and all of this is getting moved. Hopefully soon, <clears throat> uh, in front of the trailer here. Uh, was a huge pile of wood chips from here all the way to the back that I moved. Then I'll show you where I put that here in a few minutes. But um, wood chips come in different forms. And there's different things in them depending on what kind of tree. Like this was here, a pine tree. So you got all these needles and stuff. These will all break down the same. So... <clears throat> It's, it's fine. You don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be <coughs> the most amazing thing. I'm trying to keep sticks and branches and stuff out, the big stuff, um, and bark, huge chunks of bark like that on the ground. I'm trying to keep those out um, so they're not around. But um, 
you know what? It's fine. It's all going to break down eventually. So from where the this bush here starts to that back fence is probably about eight feet. So that bush is all coming out. Actually, all of the greenery that you see right now is all coming out, including that half-dead tree. The tree won't come out until spring, but all the bushes are coming out uh, very shortly. All the way over to there. <clears throat> so this is an apple tree. Not exactly sure what kind, uh, but it is in dire need of a good pruning. Um, all of the trees on the property have been neglected for a very, very long time. I would say 15 to 20 years. Um, thank goodness there's not a ton of suckers on them. <coughs> Excuse me. But they've all been neglected. Um, and um, they may or may not all survive. I might end up having to take them out. Uh, I, I don't want to, um, but I want to. I want to try to save as many of the apple trees as I possibly can, um, just because they've been around for so long. But the pruning styles and stuff is, is more or less just somebody came in and decided to hack it all down, and it's quite sad. This tree here that we're looking at now <clears throat> is uh, a pear tree, and it's a very pretty tree, very dense. So it also needs to be thinned out. So lots and lots and lots of wood chips that are going to be moved around and transported. I'm gonna turn you around here. <clears throat> so if you look on the ground here, let me back up. And you can see I have some bricks and they're kind of, this one goes across this way. And then it goes to paint, and it's orange, and it goes all the way around. Back to those bricks, and then goes back over to there again. So it's a great big circle, basically, or like a big speech bubble. Um, that's going to be the grass. That's what we're keeping uh, for grass in the backyard. And then over here, just about where this log's at, uh, we're going to put a little uh, patio, or not patio, but a little uh, flat piece of, of um, terrace or whatever uh, out of the bricks. And that's where the fire pit is going to go. And then <clears throat> everything you see up like, to that bush, that bush is the property line. So all of this area in here is all going to be wood chips. And it's going to be a garden space for the wife and little secret garden Shh, don't tell anybody I told you uh, okay so there's the pear tree remember the pear tree and then next to it is another apple tree and this guy is really old I would say he's probably close to 40 years and it's just been hacked and hacked and hacked so we're gonna try to save him trim him up <clears throat> Uh, there's a lot of flowers and stuff. So the history of this house is pretty cool. The, um, the guy that originally owned it, um, he died just about 15 years ago. Uh, he was uh, 97 years old when he passed away. And he was a gardener. And he made some of the most amazing garden beds and stuff. But everything has been super, super neglected and not maintained. And so um, everything for the most part, for the most part needs to come out. There's a few things here and there that we're gonna keep, but a lot of stuff has to come out. So just kind of see there, <clears throat> you can see where there were some bricks and stuff and a paver and um, this was a, a flower bed here. And just kind of said, okay, well, it's gotta go. Um, beautiful rose bush, and this thing, if given the the right time, uh, right right sun and everything, this thing would be massive. This rose bush here would be huge. So this <clears throat> this tree here is coming out. You can see the power lines running right through it. Uh, but this tree is going to be coming out in the fall, 
after all the leaves are gone. And then I'll turn, and this is a wild and crazy apple tree. More power lines. And this one I'm going to try to save, um, even though it really needs some love. Oh, look, a wheelbarrow. <clears throat> so this is what we've been up to. And look on the ground. You can see I've, this is a load of chips I've I spread out here on the ground. Kind of standing right in the middle of it. <clears throat> and uh, you look. Those are pretty thick. Uh, they're about 16 inch thick wood chips. And when it's all settled and everything's done, it'll come out to be in about 12 inches. Um, but I've been been dumping the wood chips and you're like, oh my gosh, they're right up against the building. They're gonna cause it to rot. There's gonna be uh, infestations of termites. And no, no. Wood chips, um, when they're wet and they're alive and they're happy and they're healthy, <clears throat> they're not gonna get wood or get termites. Termites only live in dead wood um, and dry wood. And, uh, and yeah, and as you can see, <clears throat> also, um, when they settle, the, um, the wood chips will be below the siding, which is a metal siding, by the way, but they'll be below the siding. So the area here that you're looking at <clears throat> is going to be the chicken run. Um, this is, uh, next to my shed. I, that's, that's my shed there. Uh, which will eventually be my greenhouse. I'm going to convert it into a four-season greenhouse with a heated floor. It's going to be really awesome. But that'll be probably next year uh, by the time I, I do that. But this whole area up underneath this apple tree, uh, is actually just about from the bush to the fence. Oh, I just made you dizzy. Um, is is the chicken run so this whole area right here is for the chickens to go go crazy do their thing um we're gonna build um a really nice little chicken house uh actually probably uh just over here uh by the tree uh maybe i don't know we'll see and uh, anyways this will be for the chickens it's gonna be kind of cool uh, I have some ideas <clears throat> on the other side of that fence. You can see there's that chain link fence there in the back. On the other side of that, um, all the way across, will probably be my blue barrels. And I am going to uh, run a taller fence across there. And then on the corner where this is here, going this way uh, to between just beside the tree ish will be more blue barrels and that'll help define the chicken run a little bit and uh, yeah hopefully they get enough shade from the tree and that kind of thing that that you know when the sun's out they'll they'll be protected so that's kind of the plan <clears throat> so this is what we got going on so far uh, it's actually not too crazy or too difficult to do it's just time-consuming um, you have to uh, grab the pitchfork uh, or hay fork and load up the wheelbarrow and then take them to where you want them. So, okay, so here's an example. I want to show you this. So I laid these on the ground. This is one of the, I laid these on the ground, see, a week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. And you can see all the dandelions are pushing through. It's because I didn't lay them on the ground thick enough. So I have to uh, I have to lay a little bit more on the ground, but they settled. <clears throat> These wood chips really, really, really settled. They were uh, almost twice this height. But this will be the border that you see <clears throat> when we're done. I think it's quite pretty, if you ask me. Uh, so this is what you'll see, and it's going to frame in the patio area and it's gonna frame in the grass area. So, go all the way around, and it'll go across this way, and then up to the house. So, so <clears throat> this shed uh, is original to the house, and it has an actual poured foundation. This little lean-to thing here on the side, it literally is just 
barely touching the house or touching the shed. Uh, it, it is attached, but barely. Uh, I think they kept firewood or something in there. Anyways, that's going to go. We're going to get rid of that. I'm going to put a glass door on it, like a French door. Um, big, big, solid pane of glass. And then <clears throat> about where that yellow handle of that broom is, there's going to be a window there. <clears throat> and then over here on this side, the plan... So that, that'll be gone, but so from this corner to the other corner, uh, the plan is to put, uh, if I can, uh, to put two uh, glass sliding doors. And on the other side that I was just showing you, that's the same width as this, putting one glass sliding door. That way it's <clears throat> floor to ceiling glass. And there's a window over here, but... I think I'm going to replace it with a four by four um, window instead. Um, so a lot of little work. I'm gonna recite it. I'm gonna put new roofing on it, but it's gonna be heated uh, and, uh, and it's gonna be a year round greenhouse, which would be kind of cool. So here's a view of the yard where we were I'll move you over this way. so there you go okay so I've spent some time out here uh, showing you around the beautiful garden Ooh, now my coffee's cold that's okay I like it anyways um there is going to be I know this is a really long video uh, in the future, they won't be like this at all, I promise. Uh, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> I'll be behind the camera, uh, walking around the yard, showing you updates of what's going on and what's the plan and what's happened and that kind of stuff. Uh, coming up very soon, hopefully this weekend, uh, we'll get a fence up um, and we'll end up bringing in more bricks and we'll do some more stuff out here in the yard and get some more cleanup and stuff done. So... Anyways, um, I want to thank you so much for, for joining me today uh, here in my garden. It's been a long, long time, but um, yeah, this is it. This is episode number one, so uh, welcome to my garden. Uh, I am Graham, and uh, you know, this is Sir Cracker's garden. It's just on a much larger scale, and uh, yes, the blue barrels, they're coming back. Uh, it may not be right this moment, but they will be coming back. They will be on their way back uh, very, very soon, hopefully. So, all right. Uh, until next time, I want you all to have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. And uh, don't forget to, you know, hit those buttons and subscribe and thumbs up and blah, 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 blah. So, until then, bye for now. <laughs>